This is a cool microphone. What's up yeah. with this? This is a much more professional table, much more tech savvy. That's definitely what's happening. We actually this have, have some couple, like yeah. time together over here. We did another roundtable earlier, so you guys are at the championship. <laughs> or, well, did you work out the kinks in that one? Yeah, yeah. This is all worked out. We actually even worked out the first question. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. So, first question. Um, so you guys have a brand new network, had a whole season of brand new network. Have there been any differences between going from Fox to NBC and The our... only real substantive dif difference is that we can bleep curse words on NBC and we can pixelate nudity on NBC. We did both of those things a lot, probably too yeah. much. Like after five years of not being allowed to, there was a lot of swearing on the show. Um, but in, in general, I would say there hasn't been a, a major difference. I mean, a, a, a thing we think is that in a lot of ways, we were always making an NBC show, even when we were on Fox. In terms of its sensibility, uh, while we loved being on Fox and they were wonderful to us, and yeah, a lot of the comedy us, DNA, Mike yeah. and Dan come from Parks and Rack, and I was coming from Thirty Rock, and he comes from SNL. It, it, it was always a natural fit for us to be, and the studio is universal, you know, and they they produce all those NBC shows, the Parks and the Office, and you know, so it just always, it really didn't change that much for us, except that. You know, we just kept making the show we, we also, made. Also, quite honestly, started. we also just always wrote to our sensibility. And so, no one has ever asked us to change the sensibility for which to which we're writing. Yeah. In which we're writing? No one has asked us to change our sensibility. Yeah. <laughs> just use the last part. Don't do yeah. this. Don't believe. Please. <laughs> please edit. Fix it in post. Yeah. Uh, is uh, Stephanie Beatrice going to direct any more episodes next season? Um, we haven't fully locked our schedule. Stephanie has been very busy uh, shooting this Lynn manuel Miranda movie, and so, you know, these, the scheduling is difficult. But to be quite honest, she did a wonderful job, and uh, so that did Melissa and so did Joe. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was a, I'm very proud of that episode. The toughest thing is, in having an actor direct, is um, that you lose them really effectively for two weeks because you lose them when they're prepping for the episode, and then you lose them when they're shooting the episode. And so it's very hard. We love Stephanie so much. We love Melissa so much. We love Joe so much. It's very hard to voluntarily say we're going to not have them in there. Apparently Dick Wolf has a rule where actors can only direct if once they've been on the show for 17 seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Which backs me up. But um, yes, if there's if schedule permits, uh, we would love to have them back. They're, they're great. Yeah. And they all did such a good job last year. Can we expect... Gina to return at some point next season? I would love that. Uh, we haven't, again, we're, we're in the writer's room now, we're still writing the, the, the series, but yeah, I mean, Chelsea is such a vital part of the family, and Gina is such an important character on the show, and our intention has always been that she will come back frequently, um, and so, yes, I, 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 I can't say yes because nothing is in writing, but it is our firm intention that, that you will see more Gina. Yeah. Uh, why isn't she there as often as she was before? What happened there? She was a regular on the show and she is no longer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now that Holtz maybe is, he's still beat cop, what's going to happen with the Halloween heist? And also, uh, how is the, what's the process for creating each heist like? Interesting. Um, <laughs> so, I, I mean, we, we, it, we have to see uh, how that would impact, how his position will impact the Halloween heist. Um, we have uh, not started breaking... It's still called the Halloween heist, but now... Yeah, we should just call it the heist. We're yeah. a mid-season show last year, we, we pushed it to the secret mile. It's the alliteration. No <laughs> we'll have to like, you know, it's a little stressful because we don't know when we're on. Last year we, 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 we waited a while until we finally knew where we were on and then we were like, okay, there's an episode right around to go to mile. They ended up pushing it a week later, but... So every year it's been a different process. In the beginning, the first year, one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to show Jake beating Holt at something, because Holt had beaten Jake at everything until that moment. The second season, we wanted to show Holt had learned how to have fun, and so we had him really destroy Jake. And then it was important to us that Amy, who's such a great detective and an equal in many ways, in every way, uh, and maybe even a better detective than Jake, uh, that she should have this win and that she had been underestimated. And so every year there's a different feeling. And then we had the idea that we were going to make a pro the proposal be a part of the heist. And so that really motivated that season. And then I, I think to some extent the, the challenge that helped us create last year's heist was the fact that it wasn't going to be on Halloween. Yeah. That it had to be taken a mile. We spent a lot of time talk, 
we spent a lot of time figuring out what that meant. Would it be a flashback episode? Would there be unfinished business? And a lot of aspects of that idea made it into the Cinco de Mayo script. There's the flashback to Halloween having been canceled because of a big fire, uh, which then turns out to be a part of the heist. And so all of these things... Yeah, I mean, I think it's like we... we it's distinctly put, I think we try and look at what what new conditions we have for that season, for the characters, for the world, and then we often use that as the starting point because it's we've now done five of them and it's hard not to repeat six, them. six of them and it's hard not to repeat. And also we just want it to be as fun as possible. Fun as big and big as possible. Can I ask really quick? Oh, sorry. I guess this was a silly one, so someone else can ask a bigger one. So, having worked with the actors for so long, how much did you get story ideas from seeing them develop the characters? Like, did any of the stories come out? Yes, I, to some done? extent that, that happens. Uh, I wouldn't say so much the story ideas, though, as much as, like, just, just generally the characters are so informed by their personalities. You know, like, I would say... No, but from watching them develop their characters? Yeah, I, yeah. Think that, I would say that we watch... You know, Charles interact with Jake and et cetera, and we develop story ideas. Yeah, I know. And, and we've, as you're saying, we base a lot of their characters on knowing the actors and getting to know them better. And I'd say all of the lives. characters, yeah, I would say all of the characters have trended over, already started, I think you guys did a great job, right? The pilot of like adjusting your vision when you had the actors in place to make sure that you aren't just forcing actors to, to like convert to go, you know, they to what was on the page, but rather adjust what's on the page. Uh, you can edit that out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep it. I'm not proud, you know? I think it shows a human side of me. Um, Otherwise, I might come across as too perfect. Oh, we gotta um, go. Anyway, I just say, <laughs> they all are becoming more and more, the characters become more and more like the real people. And it's very helpful. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.